Hello and welcome to Talk with Jayo. This is your captain, Jackton Otieno. And we keep saying that Talk with Jayo is all about inspiring stories. And we say everyone is important, everyone has a story, and everyone's story is important. Today on the show, I'm privileged to host a media personality, personality a business media personality, a communicator. Uh, she calls herself an Afro optimist. Uh, and she's a mom. Uh, and I'm privileged to know her. She's called Joy Doreen Bira. I'm sure you've seen her on, on your screen. You know. uh, Joy, so good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Jackson. I have always watched your episodes and the interesting stuff that you actually talk about. So I was excited when you said you'd like to have me and I was like, what am I going to talk about? But yeah, here yeah. we are. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Thanks, yeah. thanks, for, make, thanks for making time. Mm -hmm. So I think, what, let's start with the uh, it's it's an easy but also difficult question. Yeah. Like who who is Joy Doreen? Because most of for the Kenyan audience, people have watched you on specifically KTN. Yeah. You know that's where you are for quite some time. But who is Joy Doreen? Is this the part yeah. where I take you as far back as when I was born and bring you all the way up to speed to where I'm at today? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joy, you can call me Joy, by the way. Yeah. You, you don't have to say all the three the, names, the two, yeah. like everybody says, yeah. yeah. Um, I was born in Uganda, in a mineral-rich area called mm -hmm. Kilembe, and I grew up in a close-knit family. Okay. Um, I'm the youngest in a family of five, and okay. though I have half-brothers, how many half-brothers do I have? Two, two half-brothers. Okay. They are way older than all of us. Uh, but yeah, I grew up in a close-knit family, we went to normal schools. Mm -hmm. Some people would say, well, I won't call them normal, but some yeah. people would say they were some of the best schools that, that, that we went to. And, you know, I would say life was good when we were growing up, before everything went crumbling down. <laughs> and we had to pick up the pieces, mm -hmm. um, you know, at some point in life where we came from 100 to zero and yeah. then started to pick up the pieces again. Mm -hmm. um, I went to single sex high schools and then joined Makere University where okay. I did Bachelor of Science in Information Technology. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. And everyone tends to think I did broadcast yeah. or mass communication. Yeah. I didn't. Because you, did, you do it I so did, well. I did BSCIT. I, okay. Thank you. I was trained on the job, which I think is a thousand times better than going to study for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much me. And I started, um, I think my interest in the media started when I was way younger because my folks or my parents always yeah. had, you know, all these things around us, painting competitions or reading competitions. Okay. We didn't really watch that much TV or I didn't watch that much TV when I was growing up. but. Yeah. I think into well into my teens, that's when I started to watch TV. I started to pick the interest in radio. I used to watch Christian Among Four. I used uh, to watch Richard Quest. Okay. Um, and Steve uh, Sucker of the BBC. Uh -huh. Steve Tucker. If yeah. not screw up his name. Of the BBC. And I mean, a whole lot of others. I used to listen to Rick Dees uh, on radio. And, you know, I always used to say, man, this guy is good at whatever he does. Yeah. Maybe one time, one time, maybe yeah. I will join radio. So when I was about 16, I had just completed my Form 4. Okay. And my dad is like, so you're not doing anything here, you know? You've gone to some schools, some really good schools, but now I feel that you need to make yourself useful. Yeah. And he went and spoke to the guys at the local radio station in my hometown and said, um, can you find something for her to do, uh -huh. you know? And my, my elder sister had 
done the same thing at the same radio station. So okay. she used to, I think, read the news uh -huh. some several times in a week. Yeah. So she had now moved on. She had gone to do other things, you know, herself. So when I was 16, he went back to the same radio station and he's like, so why don't you find something for her to do? Yeah. So I thought maybe, ah, they're going to teach me how the machines work, you know, the radio station. And a few days later, you know, one of the news editors there gave me a script and said, so why don't you read out loud and listening? Okay. So I read out loud, I think it was like a paragraph or something, and he said, so tomorrow you're going to be reading the five o'clock news. I was like, excuse me, what are you talking about? You yeah. know? So it started there, I think my interest in... And, and at this point you had, you had there. finished uh, your, your BSc at this point. Um, well, I think I'll call this my O level, my oh. O level, not university. Okay. My O level. I was about sixteen at the time. Interesting. And you know, in Uganda we have the system, the O level system, yeah. and the A level the system. A -level, that's right. Yeah. Before you go to uni, as yeah. opposed to here in Kenya. Yeah. So yeah, I so I started doing that, and when my vacation was done, it was time for me now to go into A level. So I went to a different school than the one I was at for my O level. Yeah. And while there, I think the interest that I had built up over the vacation time, I became, I think, a communications uh, minister at the school. And then did that throughout, I think, a year. Because okay. then having those positions were held for a year. And then after that, I joined uni. In fact, the first course I applied for was mass communication. Okay. And then the second course I applied for was, yeah. uh, I think it was industrial, industrial art. And the third course was information technology because I didn't think I would get the third one. Yeah. And <laughs> so I didn't really bother. Uh -huh. So they skipped the first and the second and gave me the third. Yeah. And I was like, okay, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. What am I going to do there? Yeah. Because I had done history, economics, geography, and fine art. Mm -hmm. And I was really good at fine art. Yeah and geography and economics. History, mm, not so much. So in uni, when they gave me the course, I was even thinking, I'm gonna join the university because it's probably one of the best universities in, in Uganda. Yeah. But I said I'll join and then switch courses. I'll probably do mass communication. Yeah. Maybe a month in or three weeks in. Yeah. But when I started doing information technology, you know, I said, look at the brighter side of it. There's, mm -hmm. there's something good to it. You yeah. know, we were learning about telecommunications, we were learning yeah. about um, marketing in the IT sector. Yeah. So many things that sort of fell into, you know, programming, coding, and it fascinated me because in some way I actually loved gadgets from, from a very young age. Mm -hmm. So building up that interest and in seeing how exactly pieces come together. Yeah. I, I left it at that. But now after my first year, mm -hmm. A friend of mine was going to do an audition. He said he wanted to be a sports presenter or something okay. at one of the newest TV stations at the time in Uganda. And yeah. he said, hey, Joy, um, it was NBS. So NBS. Yeah. yeah. So he said, so Joy, why don't you just come? Because I think I used to spend a lot of time at the campus radio uh -huh. at the university, which was now a mass communication department. Yeah. But they used to have me over or allow me to be there because I think in some ways I knew how to operate computers and something would go wrong, you need to restart the computer. Some people didn't know that it just needed yeah. rebooting. Yeah. <laughs> so I think they used to have me over there because of that. And also, I think, so this guy uh, said, hey Joy, there's a new TV station in town. I said, by the way, I'm not really keen on, on, on TV. Yeah. Maybe radio, because that's where my interest has always been. So we went to NBS for auditions, and I said, I'll wait for you here yeah. while you do the uh, audition. So I'm waiting for him in the hallway, and some gentleman comes and tells me, so what are you doing here? Um, I said, I, I came with a friend. He came to do an audition. So I'm here. I'm waiting for him to finish up. He said, what's your name? You know, and so we started having a conversation. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm looking at everybody coming down from the audition room. And I'm like, you know what? This is not for me. Yeah. The makeup, the whatever, whatever. You know, I was like, no. I think you need to be I, in I some way. You need to look some type of way to actually fit in, on TV. Yeah. So he said, no, in fact, just go up there and say your names and come back down. That, that's all it takes. And I filled out a form. 
I went, said my names in the audition room that had about six people auditioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they asked a number of questions. Among them, I don't really remember the exact questions, but I remember a few of them. One of the questions was, um, what would you like to do on TV? I said, honestly, nothing. Wow. I just came here to say my names, and because someone down there put so much pressure on me to come up here, so that's yeah. why. That was really honest. Like, so, yeah. Would you like to do um, anything on TV? I said, I, I, I'm not sure, you know? Because it was like having a conversation with someone who hasn't prepared for whatever it is yeah. that you're trying to get them into. But then they asked the question, what would you like to see on TV? So I was an evening student at university. And because I used to study in the evening, I didn't really have like enough time to watch TV during yeah. the day. And when the news was on, I did get to watch it because it happened at 9 o'clock and my lectures ended about 9.30 or 10 p.m. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I would like to watch the news in the morning and not in the evening. And also hear what people are saying. People in the streets are saying about the news. That's it. I think I was about 20, maybe 20 years old, roughly 20 years old. And they said, okay, uh, so what else would you like to know? I said, I just want to know, I, I need like, informative information that can help me as a 20 year old yeah yeah let me um, let me get this right yeah actually. so you are uh you started this career when you were 16. that's like the first time you were yeah given an opportunity yes to uh get into the media yeah and then when you were uh when you were 20 years old this is now when uh someone kind of just pushed you to get into the, uh, now to NBS for, yeah. for for an interview. For me, I mean, that that's like really, how can I put it, like, you're still very young. I was. Actually. 16, yeah. uh, getting into radio, and then uh, uh, 20 now getting an opportunity to get into TV. That's like really, really. Uh, uh, I yeah. would say I have always been like a very, optimistic person like okay. from, from as long as I can remember yeah so when people challenge me to do something yeah I try to do it until I fail to do it mm -hmm. it is only after I have failed that I'll say okay I it doesn't suit me yeah so even with radio when I got into it you know when you're younger I think you're more open to taking risks mm -hmm. you're open to doing trying out all sorts of things yeah and I was lucky enough to have parents who just allowed us the freedom to be whatever we wanted to be mm -hmm. um, and so even with TV when even I did think I could do TV yeah. it just took one person saying go up there and say your names it actually took a lot of work because even during the audition I think they, by the time they now said, what would you want to see on TV? Yeah. It just took me maybe a few minutes to think about it and just say it out loud. And say, you know what, because I'm a new student, yeah. I was, I think, a merchandiser at the time. Uh -huh. um, you know, just making some ends meet, just yeah. probably to buy handouts and um, complement the... Because with my course at the time, we were doing a lot of computer work. Yeah. And so we needed handouts. There's so many handouts you needed to buy. Uh, within the mm. need to complement your work as well, we do yeah. coursework yeah. and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So I just needed a job to keep me busy or yeah. bring me more money for me to be. I didn't look at it as, oh my God, I want to be on TV. Yeah. No. Uh, so when I said whatever I said, I would like to see what made the news. But in the morning, before I head out to do <laughs> my merchandising, yeah. I didn't know that I was journalistically speaking about a morning show. Yeah. Ah, okay. So for them, hearing what I was saying, they were like, I think they were intrigued in some way. I don't know. And then there was someone who watched that audition because I think they were taping all the auditions. Yeah. And I got a call in the evening of yeah. that very day. Mm -hmm. And someone was saying, um, you know, do you think you can bring your CV to our, our station tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> And I said, you know what, I don't even have a CV. What are you talking about? You know, the only thing on my CV right now is is that I'm a merchandiser and I did some some questionnaire research work, I don't know, in my Form 6 vacation. Yeah. You know, it, it was it was very funny. But he said, you know what, bring it. I don't care. I don't care what you've done, just bring it. 
Um, so the next day, I go to my course mates now, because I was an evening student. We used yeah. to have like guys in their 30s, you know, who are pursuing their degree courses. Um, and I asked them, guys, yeah. I need to put up a CV. What do I need to do? What do I need to put in it? And I remember one of the guys, I think called David, who said, you know what, uh, let me help you. So he just gave me a rough idea. He sent me, I think he put it on a floppy disk at the time. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and said, go have a look at this and see, you know. So I had a look at it and edited. I didn't even edit it because I didn't have the time. I just went, put up a Word document mm -hmm. and went into Google. Um, I did a lot of that. Every time I didn't know anything, yeah. Google was always my friend. So I said how to write a CV. Yeah. Literally typed that into Google. Mm -hmm. And Google brought up all these templates and I said, oh my gosh, I don't even think... <laughs> I have half of what Google is asking me to put up, but I said, you know what, name, date of birth, <laughs> marital status, whatever, you know, and then I put everything, I the schools I went to, and I said I was a merchandiser, I said I did some research somewhere in a questionnaire form, Yeah. that was my CV, literally, so I had mm -hmm. to space out the A4 paper <laughs> to make it look like it was, you know, two pages, because how yeah. am I going to look like taking a, an A4 single paper as a CV? So I took it, long story short, um, they asked me, are you willing to learn? I said, yeah, um, but I, I can't guarantee you that I'm going to do it because I don't have presentation skills, I don't have communication skills, nothing. The only thing I know is basically how to use a computer. And they said, okay, don't worry. As long as you're willing to learn, that's all we need because yeah. this is a new station, it's an opportunity for you to do whatever, you know? And so they trained me for two weeks without me knowing exactly what I was going to do. And I think the Friday of the second week, they yeah. said, you're going on air on Monday. Wow. They had given us like some templates of uh, different shows. Yeah. But now they hadn't specified that you're going to be doing a morning show. Mm -hmm. So that Friday, they're like, on Monday, you know, we're taking you shopping today. Monday, you're going to be going on air because it doing a morning show and this is what it's like so we rehearsed a little bit about the morning show and what it would look like yeah. and the nerves the nerves were crazy because come Monday <laughs> they woke me up at 3 a.m. they're like you have to be in the studio by 5 30 because the show is starting at 6 yeah and like, man this stuff is so new to me but you know what I'm, I'm, do I'm 20 years old yeah. it doesn't hurt this ship fails sorry if this stuff fails yeah. um, <laughs> You know, you go back and just move on with uni, you know? Yeah. So that's what happened. Uh, that was my journey into TV. Mm -hmm. I remember after a week I said, you know, I went to my boss and said, I can't do this thing. It's, it's too difficult, you know? Um, <clears throat> I don't think I can wake up that early and then I have lectures in the evening. I'm going to be leaving my lecture rooms at almost 10 o'clock yeah then i sleep for three hours plus i also need to have my phone as as a university student yeah. i mean so there used yeah. to be these ladies Makerele. nights and things Makerele, <laughs> especially you know kampala night i life. know right the night life was <laughs> it was it was amazing yeah. so i was like man i don't have a life so it just so happened that these people were trying to show me the direction. And I think when we are in our, our late teens and our early 20s, we tend to miss out on mentorship, yeah. which I think I was lucky to get just in time yeah. for me to know exactly where life would be or what the mm -hmm. future would be for me. Yeah. Because everyone I interacted with at this TV station, it was, by the way, a very small TV station. Yeah. But now, it, now in BS, now it's, it's, it's probably it's, the biggest yeah, TV in yeah. Uganda right now. Um, but at the time, I mean, we, we, we were, I think we were a team of like 15. Okay. And when you're so such a small team, you tend to have one of the strongest teamwork ethics. Yeah. And that, I would say, it was one of the things that really helped me a lot. Because uh -huh. I was taught right from the start what it means to be a presenter, what it means to be a reporter, yeah. interviewing skills, everything I learned about journalism, I learned it on the job. 
Awesome. I didn't, and, and maybe additionally, I would go into Google and say how to become a good yeah. presenter, how yeah. to become ABC. Yeah, clearly Google there was all of that. Google um, has been your friend. Google has been my Wait, friend, you know and what? I think at the time YouTube was probably just starting. So yeah. sometimes I'd go in there, but there's not much information out there. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. but Google for sure. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Joya, what I find interesting about your story is, uh, I don't know, the way how you're expressing yourself. Yeah. You're very honest. No, I am. Even, you have to be honest even, about these things. <laughs> <laughs> Even on, uh, like, at, at those levels, yeah. you know, at, when you were 16 and 20, you were very honest. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'm going to do this. Yeah. I don't think I, you know, like, um, I mean, what was the, how can I put it in? Like, I mean, what was the, was it, was this informed by your upbringing or, because um, if you, you're too honest like that, you're gonna, not going to get the job. Well, you when know. you're younger, and I would actually say this to young people today, yeah. mm -hmm. you're better off being honest now yeah. than later. Because mm -hmm. when you're honest in your younger ages, yeah. it's so easy for people to teach you. Yeah. Imagine if I had said, I know what I'm doing, and you know, bring it, bring it to me. You know, bring it on. I'll do it. Yeah. When you actually have that attitude. There's so much that you miss out on. There's so much you miss out on learning, especially. Yeah. What if I had said, oh, you know, I know how to present myself and how to communicate. There's so much I would have missed out on just because I said I knew it when I actually didn't. So when you're younger and you know that there's a lot that you need to learn, I think it's important for you to be honest, but it's also important for you to be willing to learn. Yeah. Um, I would say I was willing to learn, but mm -hmm. I was also willing to do my part. Yeah. When someone teaches you something, you go ahead and practice it yeah. because you never get good at anything That's until right. you practice it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there, there was a lot of teaching, but there, there was also a lot of me yeah. taking out the time Initiative. to learn. And yeah. I did so many trainings, how to be a data journalist, uh -huh. how to like any training that came up for journalists or media personalities to take on, yeah. I took it. Um, and actually they wrote some really crazy articles about me, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I think a month into TV, there was this crazy article they wrote about um, how this station got a young student from university and just yeah. threw her on TV. Yeah. So I had to look for the journalist who wrote that article and he said, Man, do, you know, do you know what kind of pressure I'm under yeah. just from that crazy article you wrote? And from that moment on, I said, by the way, look at it from this perspective. Yeah. If you don't tell me how I need to improve, mm -hmm. I'm not going to improve. And yeah. he was like one of those big entertainment journalists in Uganda. Okay. So I said, if you want to write good articles about me, you need yeah. to tell me where I'm getting it from. Yeah. You know? So that the next time you write about me, yeah. you, you will write, write about me from something. a perspective. Like yeah. The last time we had a conversation, she actually said she was going to work on ABC. Yeah. So I, I took it from that perspective. And I would say I had so many mentors around me, uh, from my bosses to my supervisors. Everyone was making sure that I had exactly what I needed yeah. to get it right. They gave me all the morning shows uh, from the BBC, from ITV, from ABC in the US. Um, anything I needed, yeah. I had it. I got it. All the mentorship I needed, I got it. So for me, I would say it takes, it takes a village. Yeah. yeah, to train somebody That's right. to get it right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice. I know now, you know, what we're talking about is all happening in Uganda. Yeah. But we're doing this show in Kenya. Right. So I don't know how you, how you <laughs> transition, made the transition. Uh, to Kenya. Interesting. But I want you to hold that because we're going to do that in part two. Oh. And okay. I hope you, you're also uh, a, a correspondent mm -hmm. for Doshi Yes. I hope I pronounced it right. Yes. Yeah. You did. D D w <laughs> TV. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do that in part two. We'd like you to stay tuned right here. This is Talk with J.O. where it's all about inspiring stories. Catch you on part two.